we realize like this is this represents the ultimate clash of culture and civilization today, which is, you know, who are we? Do we love children and family and marriage? And do we peacefully serve each other? Or do we not only violate children and family and marriage, but then do we attack those that dare to live for those things? That's right. And that's what was happening. And you were caught in the very center of it all with literally the biggest, uh, you know, the most powerful government, government on earth, arguably, anyways, right. um, trying to throw you behind bars for what? Standing on a sidewalk to pray for the, for the most right. vulnerable. There was a lot of interesting back and forth. There was a lot of sidebars between the judge and the defense and the prosecution. A lot of interruption. They had to excuse the jury a lot because the government was just uh, pushing things and, and we were refuting a lot of it with our rebuttals and a lot of conversations. At some point off the record, the judge says to, to the prosecution, he says, you know, this, this face act, is, it, it, when is it going to stop? He's like, wow. it seems to be infringing upon the liberty of regular citizens. Like, He's, where's the boundaries? Where's the boundaries? There's got to be boundaries. You're spreading it way too thin. And he says yeah. to the Sanjay Patel, who's wrote the manual, the attorney for the prosecutor, on the face acts. He's the guy. He's the second chair at all these cases coming up. He will be sitting there. He's supposed to be there for the other side. The other side, too. Yeah. Pregnancy Resource Centers, the Catholic churches. But anyhow, he, he says to Sanjay, go back to Washington, D.C. and fix this. Wow. Yeah. Prior to going into the trial, we put a brief forward, Thomas mm-hmm. More Society, which said... When Ted Kennedy was sponsoring this mm-hmm. law and with David Dorenberger, and they were on the House floor, yeah. Dorenberger asked Kennedy, does this apply to escorts? Right. And he said, no, it does not. Wow. So this was put forward to the judge, and the judge dismissed it because he's a federal judge and he can do that. But he also, I don't know, maybe in his mind said, maybe that's not for the best. Mm-hmm. I have no idea what he was thinking. And the FACE Act that's being weaponized against you is basically adding additional charges of conspiracy to those that are seen to make it difficult to access reproductive services in their kind of, uh, you know, dystopian language. And they're trying to find ways then to apply it to anyone who prayerfully and peacefully stands on sidewalks to provide options for women, you know, real choice for women. And globally, Canada has actually um, impose laws that force people to not even be able to practice freedom of speech outside of, they don't respect freedom of speech in Canada, like we hopefully still try to respect here. And, you know, you get stories like Mary Wagner, um, the sidewalk advocate who spent, uh, I think, over two years in jail, y- young woman for praying and counseling on an abortion clinic. And then over in the UK, right. we have these stories of, of uh, priests and a young woman who's standing outside abortion clinics in England, and they're praying they're not even saying anything. And for just praying in their mind, there was a viral clip, a woman who's a young woman praying in her mind, are you praying? And she says, yes. And she's arrested for praying in her mind yeah. outside a clinic right. and on a public sidewalk. Right. Right. So that's where other countries have gone. And your fight is so important together, the fight to stand up to, uh, you know, let it go to trial and then to win, which you you know ultimately would do. Because you're showing that this is an overreach against fundamental freedoms that we have as Americans. Right. 